What we're going to talk about here is determining the degrees of unsaturation for either a structure or a formula. And we're going to find this to be extremely useful, um, especially with the formulas, because by determining the degrees of unsaturation, it will help us narrow down the structures, which is what we're going to use um, when dealing with spectroscopy problems. So first, just um, a general overview um, of unsaturations. What a degree of unsaturation is, is essentially a deficiency of two hydrogen from a molecule. So every time you have a loss of two hydrogen, that's an additional degree of unsaturation. So for example, um, our leftmost structure is pentane. And pentane is a saturated alkane. It follows the general formula Cn, H2n, plus 2. It's completely saturated. And for these five carbons, if we plug 5 in for n, uh, 2 times 5 plus 2 is 12. So we have C5, H12, and that's a completely saturated formula. Anytime you have a double bond, that corresponds to one unsaturation. So this molecule, which is one pentene, we have one unsaturation due to the double bond. That corresponds to a loss of two hydrogen. So now we have Cn H2n, that's the formula for an alkene, C5, H10. And you'll notice going from pentane to pentene, we've lost two hydrogen corresponding to that one unsaturation. An additional way to have one unsaturation is a ring. So here we have cyclopentane. This one ring counts as one unsaturation. And our formula here, if you use the general formula CNH2N, or you just count up the number of carbons and hydrogen, you should find C5H10. And this, going from an acyclic alkane to a cyclic alkane, is... Um, one unsaturation or one loss of two hydrogen. Finally, we have um, the alkyne and a general formula for um, an alkyne H2N minus two. So for this one, we have, even if you just go through and count up, five carbons, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hydrogen. So it does work for the rule. Two times five is 10 minus two gives us our eight. But going from our saturated molecule to this um, unsaturated molecule, we've lost a total of four hydrogen. That means there's two unsaturations here. And an alkyne or a triple bond does count for two unsaturations. Let's look at a few more, um, a little bit more complex examples. Remembering that a ring is one unsaturation, a double bond is one unsaturation, and a triple bond is two. So if we go through and count up in this first one our double bonds, we have four double bonds. Each one counts as one, so that gives us four unsaturations. Next, let's see how many rings we have. We just have this one ring. Each ring counts as one, so that's one unsaturation. And then finally, look for triple bonds. Well, this isn't a carbon-carbon triple bond, but this nitrile is a carbon-nitrogen triple bond, and that counts as well. So a triple bond that counts for two unsaturations. 
So if we add these up, we get 4 plus 1 plus 2. This molecule has a total of 7 unsaturations. Okay, let's look at our next one. For double bonds, there's only one double bond. So that equals 1. We have one ring. That's one unsaturation. And then finally, we have one triple bond. And a triple bond counts for two unsaturations. So now, add that up. This molecule has a total of four unsaturations. Okay, our final molecule here, we have one alkene double bond, another alkene double bond. We have this imine double bond, and don't let the nitrogen throw you off. It's still a double bond, so that counts. We have three double bonds. That gives us three unsaturations. Next, look for rings. We have this three-membered ring. That gives us one unsaturation. And here, there's no triple bonds. So in this case, um, all we have are the double bonds and rings giving us unsaturations, and that's a total of four. Okay, so that's how we look at a structure and figure out the number of unsaturations. Next, we're going to look at how we can use um, a molecular formula and calculate the number of unsaturations. And this is what becomes most useful when uh, trying to figure out organic structures. And we're going to follow this general equation here for our calculation. The number of unsaturations is equal to the saturated number of hydrogen minus the unsaturated number of hydrogen divided by two. And our saturated number of hydrogen comes from this um, alkane formula, CnH2n plus two. So first we're going to deal with just basic hydrocarbons, um, things that only have hydrogen and carbon present. Here we have C8H10. This is going to be considered our unsaturated formula. Because this is a formula that contains unsaturations within it. But now let's use our saturated formula to figure out the saturated number of hydrogen. So we'll say C8, and we get 8 from here. If the molecule is completely saturated, we have 8H2 times 8 plus 2, which this gives us C8 H18. So 18 is our saturated number of hydrogen. And that's what's going to go up here in the equation. Then our unsaturated number of hydrogen is just 10. And that will go here in the equation. So now let's plug all of this into the equation and do our calculation. Our saturated number of hydrogen is 18, minus our unsaturated number of hydrogen is 10, divided by 2. So that gives us 8 divided by 2, or 4 unsaturations in the molecule. Now this doesn't help us tremendously in figuring out a structure, but it does give us some idea of what might be present. Maybe there's 4 double bonds in the structure. Maybe there's three double bonds and one ring. So it does help limit um, the possibilities. So it's pretty straightforward if we just have a hydrocarbon, but what happens if we start to add in some heteroatoms, um, halogens, oxygen, nitrogen? How do we deal with those things? So there's a few other rules that we need to know. 
Okay, the next is um, dealing with halogens. Essentially, what you want to do is get rid of the halogens from your formula. And the way we do that is we add one hydrogen for each halogen present. So here we have two halogens. Well, let's add two hydrogen to our formula. So what we're going to do, we're going to treat this formula as C6, H, instead of 10, we'll add two more hydrogen, H12. And this will be our unsaturated formula. Okay, next we need our saturated number of hydrogen. We use our um, general CN H2N plus 2 formula. Plug 6 in, C6. Let's be an N there. H2 times 6 plus 2. So we get C6, H14. Now we just need to put all of this into our unsaturation equation. And we have 14 minus 12 divided by 2, which is 2 divided by 2, or 1 unsaturation in this molecule. Okay, in the next one we have a nitrogen to deal with. And a nitrogen's a little different. Um, instead of adding a hydrogen, we actually subtract a hydrogen for each nitrogen that's present. So here, we'll treat this as C5H10, because we're subtracting one hydrogen. This is our unsaturated formula. Now our saturated formula, C5, H2 times 5 plus 2, C5, H12. Now plug this into our unsaturation equation. We do 12 minus 10 divided by 2, which is 2 divided by 2, or 1 unsaturation is present in this molecule. So this particular molecule either has a double bond in it or a ring. Okay, one last one to consider is having um, one or more oxygens in your formula. Oxygens are pretty easy. We just ignore them. So we're going to ignore those two oxygens. And we're going to treat this as C10, H18. And this is our unsaturated formula. Once again, you need to figure out your saturated formula. So we'll do C10, H2 times 10, plus 2, which is C10, H22. Now plug this into our formula. We do 22 minus 18 divided by 2, which is 4 divided by 2 and 2. So there's two unsaturations in a molecule with this molecular formula. Okay, so finally let's tie all of this together and look at a formula that contains uh, multiple heteroatoms. And just to see how this correlates to a structure, here I have a structure 
as well as its molecular formula. So first, let's just do this visually. So we have three double bonds here, plus one carbon-oxygen double bond. We have four double bonds. That's four unsaturations. And we have one ring. So this gives us a total of five unsaturations in this structure. But if we didn't have the structure and all we had was the formula, we want to be able to calculate this. Okay, well what we need to do is deal with this like we've been doing. So here we have uh, this formula Well, the nitrogen Remember, add one or subtract one hydrogen for each nitrogen. So we'll subtract one hydrogen. And then we have two bromines. Well, we add one hydrogen for each halogen. So we add two hydrogen. And then the oxygen, we just ignore that. So now. We'll treat this as C8, H, we have 7, minus 1 is 6, plus 2 is 8. C8, H8. And that's our unsaturated formula. Our saturated formula, C8, H2 times 8, plus 2. C8, H18. So now we plug this into our unsaturation equation. Okay, we have our saturated number of hydrogen. Is 18. Minus our unsaturated number is 8 divided by 2. So this gives us 10 divided by 2 or 5, which of course matches what we already saw from the structure. So by getting this number, if we didn't have the structure, it would help us to narrow down the possibilities. So finally, here's just a summary of um, the different aspects of determining unsaturations, um, and I'll list this as a PDF file so that you can print that out if you want. Um, but it just has the basics of how you want to go about determining the unsaturations for either a structure or a formula.